Welcome back everyone, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be adding some new plants into my Biobear terrarium. A couple of them only just arrived this morning and the first one I'm going to show you is the Dacinia marmorata. This is a jewel orchid and if you're familiar with jewel orchids you'll see that it looks a little bit similar to the Macodes but it's much larger in size and this guy's been in the post for a week now so he's looking a little bit worse for wear as you can see the bottom leaves have gone yellow so I'm just going to trim these off in a minute. Um, I think that is due to the, the moss that it's in is completely soggy and they don't like soggy media. I'm assuming they did that because they knew it was going to be in the post for a while so they didn't want it to dry out but that's okay, the top leaves look okay. This particular jewel orchid is one of the most difficult to grow. It requires very high humidity and it is prone to rotting. So let's take it out and see what's going on. I might have to cut it out actually. I think it's going to be very happy inside the biob air. Just want to see what is going on with the root system because I haven't got a clue whether it is a large root system or whether it's quite small. I'm not wearing my scary black gloves today. Someone commented on one of my previous videos about my black gloves, thought it was quite funny. I'm used to wearing them for work every day because I'm a cosmetic tattooist, so I just didn't think anything of it. Okay, still can't see any roots. Ah, here we are. You can see them here. So ideally, I'd like to get it out of this really soggy moss and kind of rewrap it. So I think what I'm going to do, because I don't want to damage the roots, is I'm just going to leave it like this and just let it dry out a bit. And then I'll just add some more sphagnum moss kind of around the top. And I'm just going to trim off these yellow leaves. They're kind of falling off anyway now, to be honest. Probably pull it off. Oh yeah, look, there we are. One. So I'm just gonna set him to the side and then show you the other plants that I'm gonna be putting in my biorb. So next up, I have some unrooted Begonia Amphioxus cuttings. I already put one cutting into the biorb air, but I did make the mistake of trying to root it out of the biorb air before I put it in. So it dropped loads of leaves and I wouldn't say it's looking its best. So I thought, right, I'm gonna give it another go and just literally put these straight in. So I am going to be rooting these in sphagnum moss. You can also root them in water, but apparently there's more success with rooting them in sphagnum moss, so that's what I'm going to do. This particular type of begonia is quite rare and it's very difficult to grow, so I'm seeing this as a bit of a challenge. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. Let me bring it closer to the camera. I love these begonias. They are so unusual and very, very striking. Very alien-like. You can see here that the leaves are quite wet because they sprayed the inside of the bags for shipping. But this particular type of begonia doesn't like to be wet on the leaves as it is prone to mold. It's quite mold sensitive. Oh, I can see a little bend here on that one. You can actually root the leaves of this begonia. So if any of them do fall off, I'm just gonna try rooting the leaves. So I'm literally just going to wrap the bottom of it in sphagnum moss. I use this live sphagnum moss. It's um, nice and green and if you keep it slightly moist it stays green. Oh yes, I just remembered I need to dip this in rooting hormone before I put it in the moss. The rooting hormone I use is called Clonex. Just going to tip a little bit in here. It is a gel. So let's open the next cutting. So with this one, because this leaf's quite close to the bottom of the stem, I'm just gonna trim this leaf off and root that separately. Amphioxus actually means sharp at both ends. You can see why it's called that. So unusual. It looks so good though in the biob, it really stands out and it's a real showstopper. These begonias love high humidity and they like slightly moist media but not too soggy, so be careful not to overwater. As I mentioned earlier, these are prone to dropping leaves, but apparently if they do drop, it's best just to leave them because they can actually root. Last but not least, we have the beautiful Tillandsia cyanea anita, also known as the pink quill plant. This is really interesting because it is a bromeliad, but it's also an air plant. So you can grow it as an air plant, or you can grow it in really well draining substrate such as orchid bark or your preferred mix. It does flower, it gets beautiful purple flowers and I think it's going to love it in my biorb air. I do have a larger version of one of these growing in my living room and I love it so much I thought I'd get a mini version for the biorb. So what I'm going to do is take all these beauties over to the biob air and plant them in. I have to move a few plants around and it's a little bit awkward taking over my filming equipment. So I'm just gonna plant them and then I will give you the updated biob air tour. Here we are at the orb. Everything's been planted up and it's looking pretty spectacular in here. So what I did with the Dulcinea, the jewel orchid at the back there, is I dug a hole and then I lined it with orchid bark and then just popped him in. He's wrapped in sphagnum moss and then all the begonia cuttings are just wrapped in sphagnum moss and then just kind of placed on the surface. 
and then the Tillandsia at the back there is growing as an air plant so that's just literally placed on top as well. Oh look, you can see one of my ladybirds there on the begonia. Unfortunately I had some thrips in the biorb over the last few months so I have had some predatory insects in here trying to deal with them and I think they're all gone now. I actually knocked the remaining leaf off my Begonia amphioxus that was already in the orb. Whoops. But luckily I have another three cuttings in here so hopefully they do well. Wow, that looks absolutely awesome. So you can see how big this jewel orchid is compared to the others. It's pretty huge. At the back there, if you're wondering what that little pot is, it was a pot of predatory mites combating the thrips. My Macodes petola jewel orchids, the green ones there, they have tripled in size since they've been in here. That one there has flowered as well. My variegated syngonium's just been growing like crazy and that's getting another new leaf. The white fusion's still looking very nice, although it did get attacked by the thrips, so I did have to cut a few leaves off it all the new growths coming through really lovely. Again the thrips got my begonia maculata whitey eye so it's looking a little bit sad but all the new growths coming through nice. You can see the ladybird there on top of the begonia in his own little world. If all the thrips have gone then he will have some predatory mites to feed on. But once I know all the bugs are out of the biorb, then I will release the ladybirds into the garden. There should be about four or five of them in here and I've had them in here for about three weeks. If you'd like to know a bit more about the Biobear terrarium, I'll link below my original video of me setting and planting it up. Plus I'll link below the Biorb website and links to where you can actually buy the product from. I'll keep you guys posted on how all the plants are doing. And please keep your fingers crossed for me that I can successfully root the Begonia amphioxus cuttings in here because they can be very tricky to grow definitely not a beginner's plant. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Take care and I'll see you all soon.